Do you often have a hard time placing your camera? Or do you take 4 business days to pan your view or find your mesh? That's probably cause you skipped the most basic navigation skills required to survive in Blender. These small problems you face during work are what could make a 1 hour project last the whole day, or even more. While the fix is easy, it could take a bit long to gather all these little tips that can multiply your productivity by 5. Don't worry, I had to learn it the hard way, but you don't. I don't want you to go through all the pain and frustration of ignorance, so I made a very detailed and easy to follow tutorial that even my cat can understand. We can't recover lost time, but we sure can avoid wasting it. So prepare your laptops and let's get started. Hi, quick announcement. For months now, I've been working on a project that I can't wait to present to you. That's why I have not been uploading a lot lately. I really want to take my time and make something solid that will really have a meaning for you and me. I've done most of the work at the moment this video is published. So you can expect it around mid-December or a bit later. I hope you will really enjoy it cause I put a lot of love into it and had so much fun making it. I'll probably make a sort of trailer or announcement a week or two before the release. But you can follow the weekly update on my Instagram. Hi, back to the video. Depending on the project you're working on, you'll spend a lot of time in Blender's viewport. Whether it is for modeling, sculpting, animation or use pencil. So it really is crucial that you know how to navigate in it. Let's start with the basic moves you need to know which are a pen, a zoom, and a rotation. First I'm going to do the example with a the mouse, then I'll show you another one with a drawing tablet. If you want to pan the screen, all you need to do is hold, shift, and the middle mouse button. Then you can move it in any direction you want. If you're using a tablet, then you first need to go into preferences and in the input section, enable emulate 3 mouse button. This will allow you to use the alt key as your middle mouse button. So now when you want to pan, all you have to do is press and hold shift plus alt, and click and hold with your tablet pen and move the screen in any desired direction. There are two ways you can zoom with your mouse. You can either roll your middle mouse button forward or backward, or you can hold Ctrl plus Alt and click and hold your middle mouse button and move your mouse forward or backward. This type of zoom is smoother. If you're on a tablet, then it's similar to the mouse, but this time you have to hold Ctrl plus Alt and click with your pen and drag it forward or backward. For mouse, just hold your middle mouse button and move the mouse wherever you want. And for the tablet, just click and hold the Alt key and move your pen. You can also rotate it around the normal axis of the view using Ctrl plus Alt and middle mouse button. I discovered this while making this video and I think it could be helpful for Chris Pencil users for example. Alright, now you know the simple moves, let's get to the next step, the focus and the fly mode. When you're working on a mesh or any object and you zoom on a certain part or you pan the screen to a point you can't see the mesh anymore. Even worse, when you rotate the screen it is not centered on the mesh. What if I tell you that there is one key that if you press it, you can put the focus back on the main object without panning or zooming to get back to where you were. That key is the dot key. Yeah, it's that simple. Just select the object, face, bone or even the vertex you want to focus on and press dot on your numpad. The view is now centered on the main object selected. So is your rotation. Cool, right? If you mess it up again, it's fine, just repeat the process. It's free. Okay, what if you don't have a numpad? Then you shouldn't probably be using that thing you call laptop for Blender. Just kidding. But go get a numpad keyboard, it's really useful. So just go to preferences, open your key map, on the 3D view, look for pivot point, and you'll find what key does it for you. Alright. With all the skills you picked up, you're twice the person you were before watching the video. But we're not done yet, let me show you how you can become a real superhero and fly in the viewport like Goku. Have you ever tried to place your camera at a precise angle that would make your render go viral on Instagram, but ended up spending half an hour rolling in the deep? Then come with me. You need to see this. All I do when I want to place a camera somewhere specific is go into camera view by pressing 0 on my numpad. And now I press Shift plus F and voila, I can fly inside the viewport using the keys showing on the screen. I can go up, down, forward, back, I can even increase or decrease the speed of the movement by rolling my middle mouse button up or down. These are the default settings, but you can change them in preferences later. If Shift plus F doesn't work for you, it's absolutely normal, it's because it's my custom shortcut. You can add yours by going into view, click on navigation, right click on walk mode and add your own shortcut. Yeah, it's called walk mode because there is another fly mode which is a bit different. I don't know about you, but that's not how I walk in real life, so let's just call it fly mode 2. Right, you must be feeling extremely cocky now. You All this power in your hands, too much to handle. 
Well, it might be a good idea to write all this down so you don't have to search for the video again. Or you could also subscribe. Last thing before we move to edit mode, the orthographic views. There are three of them. You can switch between them by using your numpad. Yeah, again. Click one if you want to go into front orthography, three for profile and seven for top. If you want to go to the opposite, for example, if you want to go behind the object, you can press Ctrl plus one. Or first go into front view by pressing one and press nine to go to the opposite. You can do the same for all the other views. All right, let's take a quick look into edit mode. Here there are so many stuff that I could tell you about, but they mostly are shortcuts and it could be literally a video of its own. So I'll limit it to what I think you'll need the most for now, which is switching between the selection types. If you take a look at the left hand side of the upper bar in edit mode, you can see these three icons that represent respectively vertex selection mode, edge selection mode and face selection mode. While editing, you want to be able to switch between these without relying on the interface. So here are the three keys that can help you with that. One is for the vertex selection, two for the edges, and three for the face. Perfect. Now let's take a look at object manipulation inside the viewport. By manipulation, I mean rotation, movement, and scale. I assume you already know how to make those transformations, so I'll just tell you about how to constrain them or cancel them. First, canceling. Let's say you want to remove the rotation of an object. Easy. Just select it and press Alt plus R. Boom. No more rotation. Want to cancel the scale or the location? Same. Press Alt followed by the corresponding key. Now for the constraints. Let's say you want to rotate this guy by 90 degrees on the z-axis. You don't have to eyeball it. Simply press R plus Z, then write 90 using your numpad. If you want it on the other direction, write minus 90 instead. You can also constrain the location and the scale on any desired axis by pressing the corresponding key. For example, for a movement on the z-axis, how do G plus X. You can also write the increment using the numpad as we did with the rotation, but I prefer to do it by hand when it comes to location and scale. Little bonus here, you can also constrain the location by using your middle mouse button. Just press G, then click your middle mouse button and drag it on the desired axis. It automatically constrains it on, on the axis. It will also change the axis depending on the motion of your mouse. Let's finish with quick tips to switch between the menus. The shortcut to open the pie menu is Ctrl Tab. From here you can select any of the menus here. When you are in object mode and you want to quickly switch to edit mode, just press tab. It's way faster and simpler than using the interface. Now you're playing with a rig. You can go quickly into pose mode by first selecting the rig, then pressing Ctrl tab. Alright, I think I covered it all, or at least the basic shortcuts you'll use the most. When you're getting started on any software, it's normal to think that you don't need all these fancy shortcuts. But as you keep using it, you realize that some operations just take too much time using the interface and you'll naturally be interested in using shortcuts. You won't know them all from the get go, even I don't. It takes practice and with time it will become second nature for you, literally. For now, just start with these basics I showed you in this video as these are really essential, almost indispensable in improving your workflow and your user experience overall. Alright guys, that's it for this video, I hope that it was not too overwhelming for you. I tried to simplify it as much as possible. My cat has already started using the techniques. Don't let a cat get ahead of you. With those words, let's end this video. See you guys soon and I hope and don't forget you can show some love to the channel by liking the video and subscribing. And with that being said, see you next time. Take care.